In Escape from Tarkov, players often have a preference of either PvPing close range or long range. Usually, newer players fear close range fighting, as those fights typically start and end much more quickly. But this doesn't necessarily mean long range fights are easier by any means. Personally, I'm not great in long range fights, as I don't have the patience to time my shots properly. I'm much more confident in close range fights, as the majority of my PvP habits cater to situations where the enemy is relatively close to me. So today, I'm going to be sharing with you 5 of my most important close range PvP tips for Tarkov. Before we get into it, you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash giantbusak or on TikTok under the same name. First up, let's talk about point firing. In most FPS games, you're probably used to hearing the term hip fire, where your character is shooting without aiming down sights. In these games, this type of firing is usually inaccurate, as your character is holding the weapon down at their hip. In EFT, there's no hip firing. You're either aiming down sights or you're point firing. Point firing is the act of resting the gun against your shoulder, allowing for greater accuracy than hip firing. When in close range combat, aiming down sights can lead to difficulty tracking the target since the tighter field of view gives a perspective of faster enemy motion. This is where point firing excels since with most weapons, your bullet spread won't be much different while point firing, but your field of view will be kept wide. You can further reduce bullet spread and point fire accuracy by equipping your gun with any laser. These changes will not show up on the weapon stats, but will be very apparent if you AB your point firing with and without a laser. Another note to add to point firing is that you should never be afraid of holding your gun slightly high. The majority of fights in EFT are one with a head eyes shot, especially in close quarters. If three shots miss, but the fourth hits a head eyes, you've usually won the fight, so try to aim around chest level when progressing through combat. Nice. Oh my god. Next, let's talk about pre-firing. Pre-firing is an essential PvP mechanic you need to master to excel in close range. Essentially, it's the act of beginning to shoot before peeking or exposing yourself from cover. Usually, the initial instinct would be to peek from cover, line up the shot, then shoot. This can work, but there's a lot of room for error. It gives your opponent a window of time to shoot you, and if you miss your shot, it's already too late. If you estimate the enemy's position before peeking and begin firing that direction before you expose yourself, there's a decent chance that at least some of your shots will hit, and your enemy will not be able to avoid it. Try practicing this against scavs in offline raids to get a feel for the timing and how to minimize the amount of shots wasted before peeking. Next up is considering the length of your weapon. While lengthy weapons usually correlate with lower recoil, they often tend to be more of a burden in close range situations. If you've ever aimed down sights while leaning around a corner or out of a doorway, you've probably had your PMC pull the gun back against its chest. This happens when your gun collides with the wall in front of you and can completely rule out an angle from being usable in a fight or cause you to fumble your movement. When you have a shorter weapon, this happens much less frequently and can allow you to feel much more mobile in tighter spaces. If you haven't experienced this before, try bringing a short weapon such as an SMG and a long weapon such as a shotgun into dorms. Practice peeking out of doorways and around corners and try to feel the mobility differences between the two. Another huge thing to consider in close range PvP is avoiding single exit rooms. This is heavily dependent on your level of map knowledge and can be applied to any map. Let's look at dorms again. Many rooms throughout the building have only one way in, and that's through the hallway, while some give you the option of exiting through a window as well. Another example on customs would be at New Gas. If you're in the office area, you're basically trapped if an enemy pushes into the building. If you're in the storage room, you have three doorways you can move through for repositioning during a fight, one of them allowing access to the exterior. Having multiple exits like this not only prevents you from getting Getting cornered, but also allows you multiple paths to flank the enemy from. Multiple exits also give you the opportunity to buy yourself time in the event that you need to heal or pack magazines. Try to always expand your knowledge of maps beyond knowing building locations and extracts. Learn every way into and out of buildings. Learn which doors are locked and unlocked. Learn which angles are accessible to you from any moment. All of these add together to further build up your mobility in close quarters fights. Lastly, in close range combat, you never want to remain still. It may feel like the safest and most easily executable option to hold an angle aiming at where you expect the enemy to come from. This may work in some situations, but let's consider sound for a moment. Everything you do, whether it be turning, aiming down sights, opening your bag, breathing, etc. All of these things make noise. If you're in an engagement with an experienced player and you aim down sights, they will most likely hear it. If they hear the ADS sound, then no sound of movement afterward, they know exactly where you are. If you walk around, then stop moving, they know you're wherever the footstep sounds stopped. 
The best way to get around this is to always be mobile. It's much more difficult to keep track of an enemy which is constantly moving around and repositioning than one that has moved once in the last 30 seconds. Keep this in mind when in your close range engagements. If you're close enough to hear the enemy, they can likely hear you too. Always try to avoid remaining still for extended periods of time. And that's all I have for this video. Hopefully these tips will at least help you think of your close range engagements a little differently. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.